getting this 906 out of here. This video is about that little beauty right there. We will pull that in here and we will show you what needs to be done on that. It's a lot of stuff. It's not going to happen at once. Today we're either going to be, uh, well, let's get in here and we'll show you. Like I was saying, we're getting the 906 out of here so we can get the 08 Dodge in here. It needs some love. Actually, some love would be a massive understatement. It's going to have a lot of stuff done to it. Ah, I'm going to hit the damn building. Curl over here. I need a bigger shop, let me tell you, and I'm hoping it's gonna happen in the next two years, but I'm not moving or renting another one. I am gonna be building one. I would much rather be putting my money into an investment, an asset, rather than giving it to someone else's uh, asset. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I mean, no one has a ridiculous amount of money just to, I don't know why I didn't back straight up, that was not smart. Parking brake on this gotta be adjusted, but it I'll just turn around here. My goodness, that is a whole lot of sand here. We have a lot of work at this property um, as well. Either this year or next year, it all depends on when all the paperwork and crap is finalized for the owner here. We're gonna be clearing out all these trees behind us once the uh, once everything's finalized. We'll be clearing it. We got a lot of drainage issues to do here and his plan is to put a building up in the back here. So we'll uh, we'll figure it out. See, Mark's checking out that pin there. That was, we had a fun time putting that in. Too fun. All right, we'll see you inside. Here's what we're doing to this little beauty today. Let me know what that is. Give me a hint. It's, it holds the back axle on the truck pretty well. And it's also your suspension. Hey spring. Well, you can't see that, that's very dark. Here, let's do it this way. Ah, oh, that's an OV look. Yeah. Hey spring. There we go. Hey spring. Oh, look at this poor truck. So this year, we got a lot to do this poor little thing. You can see the, uh, the fender's got to be redone. And that's not going to be difficult. Picked up most of my tools from my dad's place. We got the MIG welder. Uh, 
The arc welder is over there, the old Lincoln, also known as uh, stick. Um, the MIG welder we can use for body work. I have body work uh, wire on that right now. We're not doing that right now. We're also not doing that until the summer at some point. But it's got to be done. Or this truck is just going to be like the 05. It'll fall apart. So we got, we're going to have to do uh, cab corners. Um, the fenders in the back, obviously, completely. Um, the box is in deep, decent shape. The bumper is horrible. Like the, the lot of this truck is in really, really good shape. Look at that frame. Look at that frame. Like it's got sand on it. You can see a little bit of rust and whatnot, but hardly anything at all. <laughs> We're in Canada, folks. We pound the salt like you wouldn't believe here. I mean, if, uh, if you're in the Southern States and you're looking for a vehicle, do not come here to Canada for it. Cause this is what you're going to get. Full of cancer. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of body work that needs to be done to this. Um, uh, we got to inspect the front end today. We're going to do that just to check tie rods, upper, lower ball joints, all that good stuff. Because you want a safe vehicle, right? Everyone wants a safe vehicle. And Mark's down and out his vehicle right now, so his kids are going to be in this vehicle. So it's got to be safe. So that's what we're going to do. Make sure it's safe for him and his kiddos. And JT's pulling the tire off. So now when you do this, when you take the tire off and you're taking the leaf spring off, we have a jack stand underneath the axle holding the truck up. And once you pull that leaf spring off, that's what's uh, basically holding everything, uh, holding the axle to the truck so we'll uh we'll make sure everything's set up properly that way nothing comes down on us and we don't drop the axle i'm gonna head back in it's a little quieter now was that a bit of a struggle a bit. did you want to try the new uh impact yeah look what we got in boys and girls i ordered this i think christmas and it sat in my house since then I was excited when I seen this. Made in the USA. Awesome. And then you read below it with global materials. And then in super tiny writing, it probably says from China. I'm just glad it says the US. I like to try to buy everything from uh, Canada and the US. But you can't always do that in today's world. Anyways, we're going to try out this new thing. Who wants to open it? There's a present. It's like Christmas. That one is uh, 700 foot pounds. Torque. I think it's a half inch. Uh, Half inch on this one. Yeah, half inch. High torque, impact wrench with, uh, what does it say? A hog anvil ring. Wow, that is amazing. That's just amazing. What do we got cooking here? I, I, I've been super, look at the size of that bugger. Where's the other impact? We gotta compare, we gotta compare. Wow. Well, that's what she says she wants, but that's what she really wants. <laughs> oh, look, it's even got the USA sticker right on the top there. Awesome. Oh, that looks cool. You must be happy. You're going to be the first person what? to use that bad boy, the Dewalt XR. I'm battery. I got your battery here, bud. Oh, beautiful. And we'll charge some more batteries up because Dewalt makes good product, but their batteries uh, are not the best. And of course, these are. What are these ones? Is it 3 amp? 3 amp, yeah. I like some of the 5 amp, but they're crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. I'm pretty sure I buy that drill cheaper than I would for buying a battery and a charger. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm excited. I want to see the... How much juice you got on that battery? Two. Two? That's good enough. I'll get another battery in charge. Oh, I want to see this. It's supposed to be high torque. It should rip that off of there. Is he going to break the bolt or rip it right off? Let's check her out. <laughs> Just like butter. Like butter. That was a lot easier than the other one, eh? Oh, uh, yeah, the other one you were. Yeah, don't worry if you strip that U bolt because you never, ever, ever reuse U bolts. Bitch. You always buy new ones. That's why I usually oh, stop before. Like that, yeah, I usually stop before it comes right out. What size is that socket, do you know? Not a clue, she's You know what, you know what we should do? Just just for some more comments here. That should be fun. 
Oh, that's metric, right? Or standard? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have standard. I was going to use a non-impact uh, socket on there just to uh, get more comments. Right, let's figure it. Wow. Yeah, that took her off pretty good. Anyways, nice when you're starting butter. here, you got to take uh, those off for your U-bolts. That's what uh, that's what basically holds the leaf spring to the axle and holds the axle in line and stops it from doing this while you're driving down the road. And there should be a shackle on the back end of this, I believe. Oh, yeah, there's the shackle. It's in good shape. Everything is in good shape. Like I said, look at the frame. It's it's pretty damn good shape. But it definitely needs body work. It needs attention. It's going to need a little work in the front end. I mean, it's still safe. It's just, it needs things just like anything. Especially in our Canadian climate. We have uh, this lovely thing called uh, six months of winter. And everyone just pounds salt all over everything. So this is what happens. Look at that. All right. Well, I don't think the gun's in there. Pop the U-joints off. No, it didn't fit in last time. We had to use a breaker bar. Yeah. So you want to keep this piece. Don't lose that because you need that. The U-bolts, you could reuse them, but for the cost of them, why, right? I mean, these ones are in not bad shape. You, I could reuse these ones, but I'm not going to. So what we're going to do with these, Let's put them where they're used best. We have scrap. There's a water pump we changed on the 08 right there. That sucker. And we did do the other side leaf spring right there. Some genius left his uh, camera at home, but that was done last fall. Alright. So, now uh, we got the U-boints, the U-boints, the U-bolts out. It's literally detached from that. The next thing we're gonna do, well, we got a jack stand you can see here. Let's see this camera, here we go. We got a jack stand holding the axle in place. And then we got the jack over there on the frame holding the truck in place. So all we gotta do, oh my goodness. We're gonna take that one bolt out on that end and then the one on this end. And then it's literally gonna come on right out and we'll put the new one right on in and we're good to go. Now this leaf spring, um, the other side we did because it was cracked, it had to be done. This side I haven't noticed any cracks but it's not gonna be too far from going. And the one thing that really irritates me because, where are we here? Because I did, the passenger side, not the driver's side yet, the truck kind of goes down the road a little bit like this because the suspension on the passenger side is brand new and on the driver's side it's not, so it's it's going down the road that way. So that's why we're gonna do this. Generally when you do one leaf spring, you want to do the other. Whether the other one's damaged or not, that way, uh, I mean if you're as picky as I am, you don't like to see the truck going down the road uh, all uh, tilted. And just swap her out. It's really not that expensive. And yeah, she's broken. Broker free? Yep. Oh, I love those breaker bars. But we'll have to check when we're stopping it. There's a mm -hmm. fork on the other side. Mm -hmm. spinning. Brake pads are still good. Have a look at the pads and rotors while you're in here. Because, I mean, if uh, you're going to change it, you might as well do it right now. Why not, right? Yeah. It's good. Rotors are good. Pads are good. Caliper's good, that's nice, because I had to change the caliper on the other side, which is actually surprisingly really cheap. Anyways, maybe we'll uh, set you up for a time lapse and you can watch us all struggle here. That sounds like fun, super fun.
So, let the bolts out, both sides. Leaf spring is pretty much ready to come out. We're gonna jack the truck up just a little bit. And one thing you wanna pay attention to is you will probably have three holes here where this leaf spring can line up. That, what, what that's for is you can actually adjust the angle of your differential. And I mean, if, if your drive shaft's on an angle uh, on that end, on that U-joint on the front, you want the equal angle on this. If you don't have that equal angle, you're gonna have vibrations in this truck like you wouldn't believe. So that's why they have those three slots so you can, and then obviously to adjust where your axle's sitting, you know, cause you, you will have a, uh, I think this one has a, a slip yoke. I don't know, I'm not hundred percent. Yeah, it's gonna slip yoke coming right out of the tranny. <laughs> so it'll also, uh, which every uh, vehicle does, it'll also adjust that. So, I mean, if, if you're hitting some bouncy roads and all of a sudden that slip, slip yoke is banging into your transmission, well, you could actually take your leaf spring and set it a, a slot backward, give you at least another inch or so away from that transmission. Logically, it makes sense. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm gonna go with that because it makes sense to me, I think. What do you guys think? Logically, it sounds good, but who knows, right? We're not mechanics. We are, uh, what do you call those? This is not our profession. We can do it and save the money, but we're, we're not professional <laughs> mechanics. We know what we're doing somewhat, right? All right, anyways, we're going to uh, get this sucker out of here and uh, get the new one in. Maybe we'll set you up uh, again here. You can watch us struggle getting this out and putting the new one in. It'll be fun, I promise. enjoyed watching us uh, on the struggle bus I lost my cat glasses or somewhere in here uh, let me show you <laughs> thanks Johnny let me show you <laughs> what we had to do for most of you are probably saying why does it take three guys to change the leaf spring well it does and uh, Johnny's been going over other other things and I'm glad I had a third guy here let me show you why here's what we had to do because the shackle bushing is seized onto the bowl because someone never put never seized in there we did um, anyways, oh, we have a series <laughs> of straps here. You see that? These are good for 800 pounds a piece. There's two of them. I'm a little nervous putting my head in here, whatever. Uh, we got the bolt in. My goodness, that shackle up there, which is uh, this part, yeah. You know, it was uh, it was seized. The bushing was in there like you wouldn't believe. And I'm not putting a new shackle on this because there's nothing wrong with it. We just had to uh, pull her tight to get her done. And for those of you that think it's not good, yeah, I see that. We'll drop that back down, no worries. Uh, Cause we can move the axle for that. Uh, I think it's just gonna be pushed 
that way actually. Ah. See, there we go, boom. That's right back in. Anyways, the leaf spring has gotta be sitting loose in here, okay? So once there's pressure on the leaf spring, it expands wider both directions, obviously. So that shackle will be sitting exactly where it permanently sits. So for those of you that think that I should have put a new shackle on here when it's not needed, I'm sorry to say you're very wrong, but it's okay. I'm wrong sometimes. Actually, a lot of times everyone's wrong. No one's perfect. Anyways, we're gonna get this, uh, this all tightened up and put to bed because uh, it's taken us every bit of 40 minutes to change the leaf spring, which is ridiculous. All right. There we go. Look at that. I went and bought a nice deep impact socket. She ain't deep enough. And my grinder is at my house. Uh, we have this thing here. I don't feel like cutting it like that. We'll be here all day. So this one, we're able to torque down. So what we're doing is we're going off the arm torque spec. Let me know when your arm's clicking. Oh yeah. Just got some more turns in there. Yes. Yeah. We're almost there, eh? Oh. Click, click, click. Oh, there we go. I heard yeah. it. I heard it. I heard it. Oh. That's right. Knock over the light. Torque to spec, folks. By the way, the torque on that is 110 foot pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Measure there with. Is it a right or left arm? It looked like you're using both. Well, yeah, I don't like it. I guess sure. when you got a short wrench instead of a three and a half foot long torque wrench, it's going to require a little bit more torque, right? Well, so yeah. he, he's got her calibrated. It's that that system yeah, it's there. It's, it's calibrated. It's good. It's yeah. good. Right? That's good. I heard it clicking. Yeah. We're good. Thumbs up for Mark. That the man means it's good. All right. So now what we're doing? We're uh, well. We, I say we like I'm doing it. Mark is jacking up the truck. Uh, we're gonna get the tire here. Here's we get some crap out of the way. Get the tire on there. And once the tire's on there, we're gonna actually lower the truck right down. Once the truck is down, the weight's on it. Then we're gonna tighten up that bolt there and the bolt on the other end. Now the reason why you don't wanna tighten that up when you have the truck in the air is you want it sitting in its natural state because there's actually bushings in the leaf spring. And if you tighten them up now and then lower it down and put pressure on those bushings, there's gonna be pressure on them all the time. The only time there should be pressure on those bushings, well, it should be never really, um, but I mean, if it does get seized in, in there, it, whenever the truck's bouncing up and down, the suspension's going, that's the only time. So make sure before you tighten those two bolts up that you lower the truck down, put the weight on it, get it to sit in its natural state, and then go ahead and torque those down. I'm gonna get back to you on the torque spec on that because I really don't know right now. I'm gonna have to go on, uh, what's this little cool thing called to get information? Oh yeah, YouTube. I'm gonna go on YouTube to get that. <laughs> All right, so JT's tightening up the, uh, the uh, lug nuts and the tires. 130 foot-pounds is what I found for that. I could not find the torque spec for torque spec. I can't even talk today. I could not find the torque spec for the eye bolts, which I'll show you what that is. Um, that's obviously the back end here. You can see that. That's the eye bolt. And I could not find the torque spec for those online anywhere. So what I'm going to do is just uh, we'll torque her down to 100 foot pounds. The U bolts were 110, so those are, I imagine, are probably around 100. So we'll tighten those down to 100, 130 for the tire torque, and then 110, 110 for the U bolts. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to uh, tighten everything down here, and then we're going to go on to the front. And we're going to inspect everything. All right. We will do that. All right. So we got the front tire off. We did our inspection. Brakes are good. Um, upper ball joint is in amazing shape, considering it's original, as well as the lower ball joint. It's 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 in really good shape as well. Um, the only thing we really got to do, the tie rod end here. Get this shit. Out I think it's here. that one, JT. Yeah, looks like it. The tie rod end there. Um, the grease fitting is C, so we're gonna take that out of there, and I'm gonna poke a hole once we get the fitting in there, and then make sure it takes grease. Because whoever changed this, it was changed, um, forgot to 
put grease in the bag. That's kind of an important stuff. Anyways, we're gonna get that out and put a new fitting in and grease it. Um, but that's gonna be, uh, I'm taking his light away. That's, that's not very nice. That's not nice at all, right? That's gonna be the end of this little video. Um, next week we're gonna be, uh, while we're starting work next week, we have some smaller projects that uh, we gotta get out of the way. We can't start right now because we still have frost in the ground. Here in North Bay, the frost goes minimum four feet in the ground. Oh, yeah. Some places it's been up to seven this year. So, I mean, that's gotta come out of the ground before we can uh, start uh, start the projects we're doing. And the reason for that is uh, once you do the excavation, you're backfilling and compacting. As you're compacting, you want that new material to mesh with the existing. Well, it ain't gonna mesh with the existing when it's frozen. So what's gonna happen with, uh, if you're just backfilling something, not a big deal, it'll settle. But if you're doing interlocking brick, that interlocking brick install is gonna settle. So you're gonna be coming back, lifting it up and redoing it. But anyways, <laughs> we're starting back next week. Um, we have a lot of stuff to the dump truck to do still yet. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Got a lot of good videos coming up. A lot of repair stuff because this is our little window. We usually get about anywhere from two weeks to a month maybe to do some servicing and uh, this year's only been two weeks because winter just did not stop this year pain in the butt anyways that's gonna be it from uh, myself mark and johnny for now anyway we will be back oh he's getting the grease gun out here's the roller good man all right you guys take care catch you on the next one Bam, look at that, I did it from behind the camera. I'm a pro too. Cool.